Hello friends, this is Dr. Rajal Shah. Today I bring a different dimension uh, to my YouTube channel. I'm going to have very short focus reviews of high yield urology pathology topics. And for today's topic, I have selected two interesting cases. First case is a 61 year old male who presented with urinary tract obstruction and was found to have three centimeter polypoid mass. He underwent transurethral resection. So at low power, we see here that the tumor has a very prominent papillary morphology. There is also significant nuclear proliferation, a stratification that you can see. And in central area of the tumor, you also see somewhat complex cribriform type of glandular component. At higher magnification, the papilla are clearly lined by atypical urothelial cells. Another noticeable feature is relatively columnar type of lining epithelial appearance with nuclear pseudostratification. So these are the typical four differential diagnoses that one would consider in this situation. And clearly the most important one, in my opinion, would be the malignant ones, which is invasive high-grade papillary urothelial carcinoma and then ductal adenocarcinoma Gleason score 4 plus 4 equal 8, grade group 4. Colorectal adenocarcinoma can certainly be also in the differential diagnosis. The second case is a 70-year-old male presented with rising PSA. His first biopsy was reported as high-grade peen. He underwent a repeat extended biopsy and the right base biopsy has uh, abnormality which is shown here. This was a relatively small focus. You can see here this complex cribriform proliferation. Clearly cytology of this proliferation is abnormal, but nuclei appear relatively monotonous. There is a columnar type of lining epithelium with nuclei appearing tall with pseudostratification. And then another very helpful feature here is that the glandular lumina are compressed with slit-like lumina. There is also some suggestion of a papillary component. And here is another view where you can see this nuclear stratification, columnar type lining epithelium and beautiful slit-like luminal uh, structures. And these are the differential for this particular one. This is certainly quite complex, but a high-grade pin is an important in the differential diagnosis. Another very important to consider would be intraductal carcinoma of the prostate and then ductal adenocarcinoma and then adenocarcinoma of the prostate with conventional acinar morphology. Also both of them Gleason score 4 plus 4 equal 8. So these two cases bring up my today's high yield topic ductal adenocarcinoma of the prostate. Ductal adenocarcinoma is a distinct variant of prostate adenocarcinoma in a pure form like the two cases I showed you is quite rare accounting for less than 1% of the uh, overall ductal adenocarcinomas but it is commonly seen in mixed form with acinar adenocarcinoma in that setting it may average about 5 to 8% of cases it may arise in large periurethral ducts or more commonly in the peripheral ducts if the growth is primarily in the periurethral ducts, then clinically often it presents like a urethral polyp or a mass, like our case number one. And this is typically considered an aggressive disease, which frequently presents with advanced pathologic stage. It has four important morphological spectrum, cribriform, papillary, solid, and large glands with flat or tufted architecture resembling high-grade pin. Cribriform and papillary are the most common one. The central theme for all morphology is glands are lined by tall columnar cells displaying elongated atypical nuclei and nuclear pseudostratification. The differential diagnosis will largely depend on the prominent morphological uh, appearance of a particular case. If your tumor has a prominent papillary morphology, like our case number one, then papillary urothelial carcinoma will be very important differential and immunostochemical markers are essential in that type of setting 
to confirm or exclude your diagnosis. A cribriform acinar adenocarcinoma has more conventional acinar morphology. Both of them are considered Gleason pattern 4 or 5 if associated with necrosis. So the distinction from biological point of view is less significant. Intraductal carcinoma and ductal adenocarcinoma are often confused as one entity. But keep in mind that both can coexist, but they are not the same entities. And I will talk more about that. Rarely, uh, you may have pin like ductal adenocarcinoma in which uh, the similarity is with the high grade pin, but the lining of the glands is similar to ductal adenocarcinoma. And I will talk more about that as well. Benign prosthetic polyp is usually easily distinguished based on the cytological features. So our case one, if you look at it, has a nice mixture of papillary and somewhat cribriforming morphology. This presented as a urethral polyp where typically prominent papillary morphology is the common manifestation like seen in this particular example. But the features that should raise your uh, suspicion regarding ductal adenocarcinoma is that the lining of this uh, papilla are somewhat columnar with prominent pseudostratification. Nuclei are also relatively quite monotonous. And, uh, but sometimes urothelial carcinoma can also show somewhat similar morphological presentation. So that's a very important differential diagnosis. Always consider these two entities in your differential diagnosis. This particular tumor was NKX 3.1 and PSA positive, two important prosthetic markers. GATA 3 was negative. And when patient presents with primarily urethral based prosthetic ductal adenocarcinoma, it may be important to do systemic biopsy to exclude a component of mixed acinar adenocarcinoma. Here is another nice example of a prominent papillary morphology. Ductal adenocarcinoma typically grows within the periurethral or peripheral ducts. Here is you can see the growth is within the peripheral ducts which expands these ducts. So sometimes you may be able to appreciate some basal cell lining surrounding these peripheral ducts. Here is another beautiful example where you have very prominent papillary and somewhat complex growth pattern within this uh, SNI and ducts of prostate uh, biopsy. So because of this particular growth pattern, if you do basal cell markers, you will often see that basal cell markers are focally at least retained in majority of cases. But that should not be considered necessarily as a diagnosis or a, as a manifestation of an intraductal carcinoma diagnosis. Keep in mind, both SNR and ductal adenocarcinoma can grow within pre-existing ducts and can have intraductal component. So the difference here is the based on the cytology, not based on the location within the ducts. The case two shows again a beautiful, nice complex cribriform growth pattern. You have a prominent columnar lining epithelium with tall nuclei with nuclear pseudostratification. Lumina shows beautiful compressed slit-like appearance and there is also some suggestion of uh, papillary architecture. So when you see this type of morphology, high-grade pin is clearly excluded from the differential diagnosis. Here is another nice view of slit-like prominent uh, morphology. Here is an example of conventional acinar prostate adenocarcinoma showing cribriform morphology. Note here the cytology is clearly here acinar type. Nuclei are round, uniform and lack the columnar look and also the lumina is more rounder or somewhat irregular but lacks that compressed slit like luminal characteristics. So here is a table showing you important differentials of ductal adenocarcinoma from intraductal carcinoma of the prostate. From architecture point of view, both can have prominent cribriform morphology. Intraductal carcinoma typically lacks papillary morphology. And cribriform morphology in ductal adenocarcinoma has a prominent slit-like appearance, while intraductal carcinoma has typically 
branching large glands appearance the lining epithelium in ductal adenocarcinoma is tall columnar pseudostratified type while pure intraductal carcinoma usually have a conventional acinar morphology with a rare markedly atypical nuclei but keep in mind that rarely even ductal adenocarcinoma can present with pure intraductal morphology and basal cells can be present in ductal adenocarcinoma as i discuss while in intraductal carcinoma basal cells are always present so basal cell markers are not going to reliably help you in this distinction and here is the morphological spectrum of intraductal carcinoma which i have discussed in several other my videos note here this beautiful large branching glands with dense cribriform architecture the cytology of this cells is more acinar in character there is a lack of papillary morphology and then sometime you may see this markedly atypical nuclei and basal cells are entirely retained rather than focal preservation which is more typical in ductal adenocarcinoma and then the very last important differential diagnosis is from pin like ductal adenocarcinoma now keep in mind that pin like ductal adenocarcinoma is considered a morphological variation within the theme of ductal adenocarcinoma but biologically these two conditions are very different so an important goal for us is to differentiate pure pin like ductal adenocarcinoma from ductal adenocarcinoma conventional ductal adenocarcinoma component so a very important point to keep in mind that cribriform or papillary morphology and even prominent micropapillary morphology is not compatible with the diagnosis of pin like ductal adenocarcinoma while ductal adenocarcinoma typically has a cribriform papillary or solid morphology both of them are going to have a similar lining epithelium so that's not a reliable feature importantly pin like ductal adenocarcinoma is characterized by complete absence of basal cell markers while in ductal adenocarcinoma basal cells may be focally preserved and important to keep in mind that in pure pin like ductal adenocarcinoma they are biologically more indolent tumors so they are typically considered gleason pattern 3 prostate adenocarcinoma while ductal adenocarcinoma are graded pattern 4 or 5 if associated with necrosis so let us review some examples of pin like ductal adenocarcinoma here is a nice pure example of pin like ductal adenocarcinoma where you see large cystically dilated glands with flat and focally tufted architecture so at individual level these glands have a strong resemblance to high grade pin but the abnormal feature is significant crowding almost in a back to back pattern and then lining epithelium is also more tall columnar uh with a nuclear pseudo stratification that of course can also be seen in high grade pin so if you are in doubt particularly in biopsy it's a very important practice to do basal cell markers to see whether there is any presence or absence of basal cells and pin like ductal adenocarcinoma is characterized by complete lack of basal cells here is another example where you see nice flat and tufted architecture with nuclear pseudo stratification but in my experience this particular morphology also on biopsy uh, because of the cystic dilatation the fragmentation of these glands is very common so you may see strips of epithelium lining within the uh, edges of the biopsy and that is somewhat a useful feature to suspect about pin like ductal adenocarcinoma but again as i said earlier in pin in biopsy setting basal cell markers are essential to confirm your diagnosis in my experience uh, pin like ductal adenocarcinoma are often associated with conventional ductal adenocarcinoma so here you can see that this particular component is looks like conventional uh pin like ductal adenocarcinoma while this one looks like a more conventional ductal adenocarcinoma because you start seeing a more complex papillary type morphology so if we zoom in in that particular area you clearly some papillary morphology which is not compatible with the diagnosis of pin like ductal adenocarcinoma 
So this is an example of a mixed spin like ductal adenocarcinoma and ductal adenocarcinoma. So importantly, this should be graded as a glissons 3 plus 4 equals 7 and not 3 plus 3 equals 6. Also important not to call the whole thing as a 4 plus 4 equal 8 because you have a prominent pin like ductal adenocarcinoma component. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a very focused review. If you like it, please also like it and share with your friends and colleagues. Thank you very much for your attention.